Hello there. Boris Johnson told Andrew Marr to stop the BBC claptrap during an interview yesterday morning. In a moment that will please many a Brexiteer fed up with the bias of the Brussels Broadcasting Company, Boris Johnson let fly at the host during the Andrew Marr show yesterday and accused him of coming out with BBC Claptrap. Boris was asked by Andrew Marr if he was happy about the progress of the Brexit negotiations, where the ECJ would still have some influence over the UK after Brexit, and that we will still be paying to be members of certain EU agencies. Are you completely cheerful that it has happened, turned out as you wanted it to? asked Mr Marr. And in reply, Boris Johnson said, I do. I think the Mansion House speech was a great step forward, and I think it shows exactly the type of deal we want to get. Then he became a little bit animated and continued, We're not going to have the influence of the European Court of Justice. I don't know why you're saying all this BBC claptrap. We're not going to be paying in after we come out. Yes, there will be an implementation period, but after we come out, we will have what is effectively a gigantic free trade deal. Now, what is our Boris saying? That the BBC is somehow a bit biased, maybe? Anyway, in yet more Brexit doom and gloom, the Times reports that the German engineering group Siemens is to open a £27 million 3D printing plant in the West Midlands, which will create 50 skilled jobs to add to the 1,000 new jobs it's created over the last three years. A YouGov survey in Wales finds there is growing opposition to a second referendum on the EU, reports ITV News. Support in Wales for another EU referendum is on the wane, according to the latest Welsh Barometer opinion poll. Back in November, exclusive polling for ITV Cymru Wales showed a very narrow 1% lead for the idea, but there's now a 10% majority for opponents of the idea, said ITV. And the Lib Dems seem to be latching on to this general waning support for another referendum with a senior Liberal Democrat saying that there is a risk that his party will descend into the pit of irrelevance after Brexit. Alistair Carmichael, the party's chief whip and a former Secretary of State for Scotland, admitted there is a risk the party will fall into irrelevance after Brexit if its appeal does not extend to bread and butter issues beyond opposition to leaving the EU, reports The Independent. So the UKIP for Remainers, as some have dubbed the Lib Dems, might have a problem if it concentrates too much on just 48% of the electorate. But they are the self-declared party of in, aren't they? So to widen its appeal, out comes the Liberal Democrat leader Vince Cable with a statement about, yes, you've got it, Brexit. It is reported that Vince Cable will be at the Should I Stay or Should I Go conference in London today and say that the UK must stay in the EU to prevent further attacks like the one seen in Salisbury. He will say because the world is becoming a very dangerous place, the British public will be safer if the UK shows solidarity with its European neighbours instead of going it alone, says The Express. Now there's a surprise, and the fact that the Scripple attack happened while we are still in the EU is completely lost on him. Maybe a more secure UK border will be more of a deterrent than the rather stupid everyone's welcome whether or not you wish us harm philosophy currently is. And this ties in with the UK's current ridiculous, unconditional support to European defence with no strings attached policy. The former Tory MP and Minister for International Security Strategy from 2010 to 2012, Sir Gerald Howarth, writes in an article for Brexit Central that The UK's disproportionate contribution to European security should be a powerful negotiating card in the Brexit talks. And anyone who regularly watches my videos knows that I totally agree with that assertion. 
Talking about Theresa May's unconditional support to European defence and Jean-Claude Juncker telling the Munich Security Conference that I wouldn't like to put security policy considerations with trade policy considerations in one hat. I understand why some would like to do that, but we don't want to. With, I would add, the support of the former heads of both MI6 and GCHQ, but Sir Gerald begs to differ. Of course, Mr Juncker, 18 years Prime Minister of mighty Luxembourg, doesn't want to put trade and security in the same hat, because the UK brings to the table not only serious military capabilities like the nuclear deterrent and our two new aircraft carriers, but also an intelligence capability vital to all our allies. And he goes on to say that the UK is perfectly entitled to play the two aces it has in its hand during these talks. The first being the £10 billion a year net we give the EU, and the second our disproportionate contribution to European security. As far as I'm concerned, if the EU wants our defence and security help, then it comes with a hefty cost, not a subservient, one-way, UK to EU unconditional support. Sir Gerald also says something else that I also firmly believe. That it is NATO that ultimately keeps the peace in Europe, not the EU. And he ends by saying, Time to play ball on trade in return for continuing security. Hear, hear, well said, I say. What do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.